Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. So today, we're looking at another very interesting deck that did well in Memphis this weekend. It's Harrison Grandish's Venusaur Genesect. He tweeted at me, he said, Ross, I did well this weekend, I came 10th, I'd like you to talk about my deck, and I said, you know what? Yes. This is a great deck. I was watching the stream this weekend. I saw it, and to be honest, I was going to do a video about it anyway. I just now have his exact list, which, shall we say, makes things a little bit easier. So let's start at the beginning. It's a Venusaur Genesec deck. So we play Venusaur, and Venusaur here is all about the ability Jungle Totem. It means that your basic grass energy count double. Now this does not stack, so no matter how many Venusaur you get in play, each grass energy is only two, it doesn't keep going, and similarly things like rainbow energy will not count double here, it's got to be a basic grass energy, the ability makes that clear. This then gets combined with Shining Genesect, also from the Shining Legends expansion. Nice ability allows you to move an energy from one of your Pokemon onto it. And then Gaia Blaster is just Caldeo EX's secret sword. 50 damage base, plus 20 for each grass energy attached to it. But then, of course, Jungle Totem comes in. So instead of having, say, free grass energy and doing 110, You've got two grass energy on, but it counts as four, and you do 130. And in a nutshell, that's the deck. You attack with Shining Genesect, with all of your grass energy counting double. But there are several things that really made this deck stand out this weekend. If we look at some of the most widely played Pokemon this weekend, Lycanroc GX was everywhere. Firstly, except for the GX attack, it does a maximum 110, and Shining Genesect has 130 HP, and it's weak to grass. So as soon as you evolve into a Lycanroc GX, you pretty much know at some point you're giving up two prizes to a Shining Genesect. And I've said this in many, many, many videos lately, but it's true. There is a huge difference between 130 and 120 HP. Two of the other Pokemon that really represented this weekend saw a lot of play from a lot of players were Golisopod GX and Zoroark GX, both of which, against a non-GX where you can't use Choice Band, do a maximum 120. So then you bring in a Shining Genesect with 130, and it just doesn't get KO'd. Because how is it going to get KO'd? Because, well, it survives with 10 HP. And I think that's a crucial thing about Shining Genesect this weekend. Maybe it's not the best Pokemon all the time, but this weekend it really, really was very, very well positioned to have a good run, because it's got the right HP, it's got the right weakness that it's hitting, and in terms of being hit for weakness, oh no, it's weak to Volcanion. From my understanding, there was very little Volcanion this weekend. People were expecting a lot of stuff like Gardevoir and Zoroark that don't really struggle with Volcanion. Hence, we're not expecting to see very much Volcanion. Now, the other Pokemon that did get played here as a 1-1 line was Lurantis GX. Now, I personally am slightly torn on Lurantis GX. First of all, it's a 1-1 line, so the chances are there will be a bunch of games where one of the two gets prized, either your Fomantis or your Lurantis. But there are two things that are really, really good here. Firstly, Flower Supply attaches two basic energy from your discard to your Pokemon in any way that you like. It helps to accelerate energy onto your Shining Genesect, which of course is important because Shining Genesect, even with Jungle Totem from a Venusaur, is not a single energy attacker. Minimum two energy, so Lurantis comes in. But the other thing is that GX attacks are kind of like the old A-Spec trainer cards. You can only have one per game, but they're so good you need to have one. And neither Shining Genesect nor Venusaur is a GX and has a GX attack, so in comes Lurantis. Let's say you get two energy on a Lurantis, will Chlorocyve GX, assuming there's a Venusaur in play, there's now four basic energy on your Lurantis, which means you're doing 200 damage. That's a lot. 
Although it should be noticed that there are no choice band in this particular list. A lot of that is just because these Pokemon, Shining Genesect especially, they accelerate damage by getting more energy. So you don't really need to have choice band. You can just get more energy on there instead. We also see Octillery there just as extra draw power. It's a non-GX unlike something like a Zoroark. It's nice for extra draw power. Most decks play some Octillery's a play here. Plus there's a lot of decks around playing Brooklet Hill so it's always fun to use your opponent's Brooklet Hill to go and search out your Remoraid. And we also see Tapu Lele here because, I mean, just like everyone else, you still want that turn one Tapu Lele for a Bridget. So you got to play some Tapu Lele. In terms of the trainer cards here, we see a lot that we expect. Four Professor Sycamore and four N. Well, of course we see them because they are the best supporters we've got. Couple of Bridget because we need that turn one Bridget play. Like I just said, we play two in case one is prized. Couple of Guzma to drag Pokemon off the bench and KO them. Of course we want more than two Guzma, but space becomes an issue. We do see a couple of Skylar here though. Skylar is basically important for searching out rare candy. There will be turns where you have everything that you need, but you don't have the rare candy. So Skylar searches out the rare candy, or I suppose you have the rare candy and you Skylar for an Ultra Ball. Personally, I'd like to see a Heavy Ball in this list so that just like when we're playing Vikavolt decks, we can Skylar for a Heavy Ball so that we don't need to have a Skylar and cards in our hand to discard. But then again, as I keep saying, as we're gonna see when we see the whole list in a minute, space is a big issue in this deck. So as with all of this, we do have to take it with a slight pinch of salt here. We do see one copy of Mallow. I mean, Mallow's an amazing card. You just get to put two cards on top of your deck. When you're playing something like Octillery, if you can get down to three cards in hand, then Octillery will draw two cards, and it will draw the two cards you put on top of your deck with Mallow. If you've got an Octillery on the field and three or fewer cards in hand, Mallow essentially becomes search for any two cards. That's great. And we see a Gladian here, which is not a widely played card. It allows you to search a card out from your prizes. And as we're going to see from the list in just a second, he's playing a 2-1-2 Venusaur line. He's playing free rare candy. There's a whole bunch of cards here which are a little bit thin. There's a 1-1 Lurantis GX line. There's a lot going on in this deck. And part of the way that Harrison was able to pull this off was by going a little bit thinner than a lot of people would like to on some lines. So a card like Gladian in those circumstances becomes very, very important. He played Ultra Ball because it's the best Pokemon search we've got. Like I've said, no Heavy Ball here, but with Skylar, I'd like to see one. He played Max Elixir. Now, I said before, Shining Genesect is not a single energy attacker. Ergo, we need to find ways to accelerate energy. And as fun as it is to be able to go, hey, I've got Lurantis GX, I'll use Flower Supply. Let's face it, you can't rely on that every game. Four Max Elixir means you should expect to hit three of them. Three out of four, most of the time, is going to be good enough. It's not amazing, but it will be good enough. Hit a Max Elixir, attach for the turn, Shining Genesect is doing all right, it's got enough energy, it's happy enough. We see rare candy for the Venusaur, only free, again, space is an issue. Field blower for Garboda, Garboda's seeing a lot less play, but there was still a bunch of it around this weekend, so we still need to be prepared. We need the field blower to turn off Garboda so that our energy counts double. Revitalizer is the Pokemon recovery of choice here, because generally you want to be recovering your grass Pokemon. Revitalizer does it very nicely indeed. Don't need Rescue Stretcher because we've got Revitalizer. And we've got Floatstone here because, well, Venusaur's got a really high retreat cost. We need to make sure it doesn't get stuck in the active. And the final card we see here is the unusual Wishful Baton. Now, Wishful Baton is a great, 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 great card under some circumstances. It is liable to be field blowed away and then you lose it for the game and that's sad. But if you've got a Shining Genesect with free energy attached and it gets KO'd, you lose all that energy. And one of the ways this deck loses is by being run out of energy. 
Wishful Baton means that you get to take all your energy, or at least up to three of them, and move them to a benched Pokemon of your choice. Maybe your opponent plays a Field Blower right before a knockout and you don't get to use it, fine. But unless they do, this recovers your energy and it's lovely. It's the reason why we're not playing stuff like Super Rod here. In theory, this is your energy recovery. Here's the list as a whole, and the first thing that should spring to mind when you see it, it's, and I mean this as a compliment, it's a little bit greedy. There's a 2-1-2 Venusaur line, there's a 1-1 Lurantis line, we're only playing 3 Rare Candy, but we're playing 4 Max Elixir. It's lighter on some things than you might expect, and heavier on others, but here's the deal. It worked. It got him 10th place at the largest Pokemon regional I believe we've ever had. It's clearly a good deck. This might lead to a few people turning around and going, you know what? Maybe we need to be a little bit more creative with our deck building. If this had been chucked in a forum before the tournament, everyone would have said two things. Firstly, well, Shining Genesec Venusaur's not that good. And secondly, huh, 212 Venusaur, free rare candy, you're playing Wishful Baton, 1-1 one, one Lurantis line, that's never going to work. But here's the thing, it did work. I adore this list, and when I look at it on paper, like I say, there are reservations. But clearly it's a good list, and clearly it worked nicely. Wasn't quite the bubble, it was 10th place, 9th place was the bubble at 34 points. This finished with 33 points. But that is one very nice finish at the largest Pokemon Regional we've ever had. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time in the video where you all tell me how great this deck is and how much you love it. I've spent the last 12 minutes telling you how much I love it. I'd like to hear from you guys how much you love it in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, etc., you can do so by going to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.